What's up, Internet Basketball Junkies? In today's video, we look at the most traditional delay game tactic, the four corners offense. I get a lot of negative feedback about delay game uh, concepts from people thinking that stalling the ball isn't real basketball. I don't necessarily disagree with that, but the reality is, as a coach, you should be looking for every way within the rules of the game to try to win the basketball game. If you're too prideful to use a delay game tactic when it would improve your odds of winning, I don't think that you have the right goal in mind. I would rather watch games that are up and down and have a flow to them, but that is about entertainment value, not about who wants to win the basketball game more. So enjoy the video if it's relevant to your situation, and if it's not, I'll catch you next video. Quick shout out to Fast Model Sports. I've used their software programs for 12 years. It's what I use to draw up all my diagrams in my videos. Use the discount code in the description for 15% off your purchase of Fast Model Sports software programs. Now let's get into the X's and O's of this delay game tactic. With this concept, we are bringing three guards out to half court, one in the center circle and two in the corners. The remaining players are in the corners of the baseline at the end line near the basket. The job description of each player is fairly simple. The guards are to stay spread, keep the ball secure, and look for opportunities to break down the defense with the dribble. The forwards are closer to the basket and are mostly finishers. Whether it's a corner three or drifting down the baseline for a rim finish when their defender helps up on penetration. They are also important with their decision making because when they get the ball they need to decide whether they have a high efficiency shot attempt or whether to throw the ball back out to the guards to continue running the clock. The pattern of movement for the guards is simple. They pass to a corner from the middle and then fill underneath, leaving the middle open for penetration. Again, the end goal is to penetrate to the middle, draw help, and dump off to the baseline for a high efficiency shot. If this tactic is executed properly, it can be back-breaking to an opponent trying to stay in a game or come from behind. This concept effectively slows down the pace of the game and forces the defense to extend. If the defense doesn't extend, the ball can just be held at half court or passed around. Once the defense does exp extend, they can be very vulnerable to penetration. If the offense beats the defense out front off penetration, the offense simply becomes a 3-on-2 advantage situation. If the ball can be passed to the baseline with the defender recovering, it's easily a dunk, layup, or free throws for the offense. As a defense, this simple concept can be brutal to guard in man-to-man -man defense. Your hand is forced to extend your defense and leave yourself vulnerable. It's natural to try to start trapping and double-teaming. After all, you have to force the offense to do something instead of just being stuck at their mercy. The problem with this is that how the offense is aligned, it's very easily to get to a 2-1-2 spacing, the optimal spacing to attack out of traps. So trapping out a man-to-man -man can speed up the possessions, but it still doesn't solve the problem of preventing high-efficiency shots on the back end. The best strategy to play against this concept is to simply not be behind 4, 6, 8, 10 points near the end of the game. But the strategy that I would use when I saw concepts like this in my coaching career was to flip on the fly to a 1-3-1 half-court trap. We would do that through a hand signal. This is a strategy that needs practice because if it's not executed well, you can have some exposure to your defense while you flip spots on the fly. You don't want to have confusion flipping from man to zone on the fly and leave someone wide open. Switching to a zone trap forces the offense to change their approach and usually will go to some form of a 2-1-2 attack. It's not perfect, but it at least forces the offense to attack with ball movement rather than an inevitable uh, advantage penetration situation. So when would the offense use this tactic? I would say usually when they are up 4 to 10 points with 4 minutes or less remaining in the game. It can also be used to run clock at the end of quarters to get to a point where they can run an end of quarter set to make sure the defense doesn't get the final shot of the quarter. This can't really be an end of quarter set in itself because it's dependent on the defense to extend to get the advantage. Uh, offenses can run end of quarter sets out of four corners alignments which is something that I've done in my coaching career and can be very effective. I'll link those concepts in the description of this video. All right, Internet Basketball Junkies, as we conclude this video, 
there's a couple things that I need from you. Give this video a like. Make sure to hit the bell to get notifications. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel and click the link in the description to my Selfie store. I have detailed basketball coaching content for sale, including a strength conditioning guide for high school coaches, a guide to running a 1-2-1-1 diamond press, a guide on the circle motion offense, a guide to running a 1-3-1 half court trap, a guide on running the European ball screen offense, a half-court deny and disrupt man-to-man -man defensive system, fundraising ideas for high school basketball coaches, and much, much more. Also, I've accumulated just about every resource I have into a product which I call My Portfolio, which is not only what I would present to an interview committee to interview for a high school coaching job, but also every supporting document we use to run our program. This includes outlines for how to run fundraisers, templates for practice plans, guides to our offensive and defensive schemes, how to run a preseason meeting with your parents, and much, much more. Check out the link in the description to see all the content that comes in my coaching portfolio that's now for sale. And finally, Fast Model Sports, the number one coaching tool in basketball. Fast Draw Play Diagramming and Fast Scout Scouting Report software can take your coaching and game planning to the next level Create and download over 9,500 plays to share with your coaches and players with FastDraw. Need help building scouting reports? Use FastScout to build custom scouting templates to best prepare for your upcoming opponents. Over 10,000 high school and youth coaches trust FastModel technology to help their teams reach their goals.